Hello, everybody. You're all very welcome to episode five of the Four Masters podcast. And I'm very happy to welcome onto the Zoom call All Ireland winner from 1992, Joyce McMullen. Joyce, how are you keeping today? Good, Kevin Connor. Very well. Can't complain. Ah, uh, good. Uh, I was just saying before we started the Zoom call when I was uh, when we when we got talking. This is a lifetime ambition of yours to to be interviewed by myself. Yeah, well, I'm a wee bit disappointed now that I'm a bit further down the line than I was expecting, you know. But Monaghan, a few boys, obviously higher up the pecking order. But anyway, look, uh, case of uh, saving the good wine, I'm I'm afraid. Well, that that's it. It it, it ages best, Joyce, and that's why we left good. you for for the last of. Uh, uh, this series anyways when we'll we'll have another coming up soon uh, enough possibly but uh we'll, we'll we want to end on a high anyways and that's absolutely your why not yeah and uh just before we get started how's lockdown been treating you i suppose that uh, training's back yeah it's good it's, it's good yeah lockdown was a pain really uh, no matter how you look at it um kids missed it terribly you know their football and that so they're back this week and they're, they're over the moon, like you know, it's been uh, it's been unprecedented, hasn't it? Uh, nobody could have foreseen it coming. But look, it it just goes to prove that um, the things you know we we appreciate these things when we, when we have them back. Don't appreciate them when we have them, and that's just it, you know. So now it's yeah. good to have everything back and and go in the right direction. Obviously, yeah. there's a bit to go yet, but it's going the right direction and at least the right kick it again. And, that, you know, it's good. and for yourself, in terms of uh, golfing, uh, how how's the golf game been treating you since you got back? Yeah, well, and those swings are open enough now yet. Um, it's going to take a few weeks there as well, but that's not that's not a serious issue. Um, no, again, you know, there was so little to do during the lockdown. It was, um, it was just one of those things, and that's it. We, we had to deal with. Um, but look at it. We can always we, we can only look forward now. I mean, getting game and that, you know. So no, it's good. It's good to have it back as well, for sure. Ah, oh, good to hear. Well, Joyce, we have a we have a good. Uh... Um, I suppose career to get through your your, your career. And we'll we'll start from as far back as we can. That's your that's your early days with four masters at underage, working through the ranks, and uh, obviously playing county vocational school, county minor, and then underage with the club. Um, from what what age did you start playing with the four masters underage with the club? Can you go back that far for us? Yeah, I suppose. Well, my football career, you know. And the GA didn't start until I went to uh, national school in in Barnes because we were in company first, and that closed nineteen seventy four. So we'd been playing soccer up to that locally in a place called Nesfield. Um, we gathered on a Sunday and we played for a couple of hours. Now it was no uh, it was no Chicanal Park or Crow Park. It was uh, very basic, but we had good fun in it, and yeah, that was it. Boys, girls, everybody piled in, and we had good fun. But I suppose when we went to Barnes more then, we um, we had a few games. Uh, it would be the equivalent of coming to Moscow now, you know, uh, against local national schools. And first game was, first game I remember well was in the hospital field. It was a GA pitch at that stage for the soccer, soccer club yeah. base now. So that was first game. And um, it's, it sticks to my mind a lot. Uh, we were playing against Bally Devitt and the main right there from Mina Kali and uh, you know I can't remember I think we lost but I, I remember it made a mark on me anyway. You know? Yeah and then once you started uh, getting to secondary school you were able to make it on to the county vocational school and you were quite successful there and then obviously as a county minor as well um, so it was really working up to the underage ranks but then at club level at underages weren't so successful I think you've played in you might be able to correct me, four county minor finals, was it? And you just weren't successful in any of them? Yeah. 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 We, we started off, at, you know, I started off at under 12 or under 11 or uh, 12. And really, you know, the likes of Frank Muldoon and Liam Mullen, who just passed away recently, would have been responsible for getting me to train. Because I live out in the country and it wasn't too hard to get in there. And, um, you know, I was grateful to those uh, for that help and a lot of other players as well who had um, who had helped coach younger teams um, and you know you don't really appreciate it at the time but those people are responsible for you know getting into the game and 
you know, starting you out on that on that long journey. And yeah, we, we had a we had a little success at underage level. Uh, um, unfortunately, we came up against a, a neighborhood team that was really strong. Um, they were a you know, really, really good team. It culminated with them winning in All Ireland. De La Salle winning in All Ireland. I see they just celebrated it 40 years ago there. Um, so they had a really good team, and yeah, they, they they were in front of us all the way up through the from 14, 16, 18. And to be honest, we were sick looking at them by the time we, we got past minor. Um, we had good minor teams, don't get me wrong, but they just weren't able to compete with what Bally Shannon had at that time. Um, but again, we, we you know we, we had we um we had good squads and plenty of good players coming through, and um you know, we, we brought a good few of those players through to senior level as well, you know. Yeah, but... The but was very was very competitive as well, of course, at that stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the, 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 um, I came on the influence of Michael Lafferty at the at the tech, as we call it, then, as the as Abbey Vocational School now. And um, he was a really good coach as well. He, he, um, he was very passionate about the game and, and he brought us through um, and we, you know, we, we, we contested a couple of county finals. We won a, an, an AIB final. Um, it was just, um, I can't remember, it's about 1981, 82, 1980, I think it was. Um, and yeah, county vocational school. Again, we came up against a really good dairy team. Um, we never got out of Ulster uh, at vocational school. But again, it was a good experience to play in, 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 in those teams against good opposition with good players. And, and um, yeah, thankfully, you know, um, I progressed through the ranks in that way, you know. Yeah, and by, by the time you met it on to the uh, Four master Senior Squad, uh, Tom Conaghan and Donald Monaghan took over, I suppose, the coaching realms, and there seemed to be a, a, a real change within the club. We were talking about, we were talking to Tom there two weeks ago, and he, he talked about how he had to bring in a regime that was very different uh, in terms of training, very, very strict on that, and the players just bought into it, and Eventually became very set successful and you know cultivated in uh, two county championships. Yeah, I mean Tom Tom changed a lot uh, when he came on board. Um, I made my debut. I think it was about nineteen seventy eight down in Glen Column Kill as a 16, 16, 17 year old, and um, we 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 were we were competitive, but we were we just lacked organisation, and I think that's. The one thing that Tom brought, he brought organization and structure. Um, he was a strict disciplinarian. There's no beating about it. He 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 um he didn't take any bullshit. And um that was his he also, of course, he also was smart enough to surround himself with players. You know, he had Donald on the on beside him and, and people who, who knew the game. Um and you know, he 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 was really he did. He revolutionised what was going on in the club and uh, the whole setup. So, yeah, he made a huge contribution, and you know we did become a successful club team thanks to his uh, organisation mainly. You know. Yeah, and um, I suppose uh, there was great rivalries at the time with Kilcar, Erua, Ardra. Um, you you got to your you got to the county final in eighty two and beat Kilkiar by a point. That was the first time four Masters took home the county championship. What, what do you remember about that or that season in general? Yeah, and previously, the, the previous year, we had lost a final to our draw in 81, and um, it was a final we could have won. Ironically, you know, and, and I had this conversation with Mark McHugh not that long ago, uh, we beat, they beat us in, oh, sorry, we won in 82 and they should have beaten us. And then in 85, they beat us. And again, we should have won that. So it sort of leveled itself out. But no, 82 was, was really tough because conditions were terrible. It was a low scoring game. Um, obviously, Martin and James McHugh were, were, were key men in their, and the Kilcar team at that stage. So we really, put the shackles a bit on them and you know we made no bones about it we felt that we could stop them that we would stop Kilcar and, and we did effectively Jackie McGordy had a very good game on Martin that day so um yeah I remember it. it was it was look at the the, the 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 celebrations afterwards and the jubilation having won first for a, for a, for something like 57 or 59 years or something 
uh, was fantastic. And it was great for, for club men and for club people. Donald had soldiered long and hard for a lot of years, Donald Monaghan, and it was fantastic that he, that he was there to captain the team and left the cup, although he was concussed. Um, but he was there, and it was good to see him uh, growing off a good club career. He had put so much into the club in the years gone by, you know. So, no, it was a very special time, and it was a very special era because we, we, we you know, we were competitive again. And we lost in 83, I think, to our draw. 84, we beat our draw in a final. 85, we lost to Kilcar. And I think in 86, we lost to Kilcar in a semi final. So, that was a good era for the club. Um, Loads of good players. Um, there was a sort of a, a, a youth and experience element to it. Um, Michael Kelly, myself, Seamus Me, and Mike McBerty, Eamon Garl, uh, Steiner would have been the younger boys in the team. Um, and then there was a cohort of experienced hardliners, and, and, and uh, they could play it, you know, whatever way they wanted. Um, they were a tough bunch. And, you know, nothing, it was man to man. And uh, they weren't afraid of going man to man. So, yeah, it was, it was good. The club was really, we were really competitive at the time. We could, you know, we weren't afraid of anybody. And um, it was a good era for the club, sure. Yeah. And one of the main uh, things about uh, winning a championship in 83 is you've got to go to uh, the United States on a getaway tour, I suppose. Uh, well, for, for some, the, as Tom said the last day, he didn't see it much as a, a party, more of a training session. I don't know how you saw it. Um, any any great stories that stands out in your memory from that trip? Uh, Jesus, uh, Connor, I'm afraid uh, there's just too much to, to detail in the, you know, in a sitting like this. It was it was a fantastic achievement first first of all to get the whole squad out. Um, you know, in the 80s, things weren't great. Money wasn't that plentiful. To get a whole squad to, to, to New York was fantastic. And we visited Boston and um, Philadelphia and Atlantic City for a day. Um, ask your father about Atlantic City. We had, we had a bit of a party about Atlantic City. Um, but no, it was fantastic. But we got a great reception from the, um, from the, from the Donegal people in New York. It was really fantastic. They looked after us so well, and it was really, yeah, it was, it was a very memorable occasion. Now, very, very memorable trip. Yeah, you talked about um, obviously winning the championship in '84 and then falling in the final at '85. You've had a great uh, youth, um, you know, experience now coming through the team, but the team seemed to decline by the late '80s, and then I think by the early '90s, the team dropped into the intermediate level of football. Um, what what was really the cause of that? What what happened to four masters at that time from winning so much success to, to falling short and falling into a lower division? Um, I suppose Connor, there's no there's no real um, single reason for it. It's just it's just swings and roundabouts, isn't it? You know, you have these phases when teams do well and. And then you, you you go through a dry spell, and that's just the way it is. It's a bit like the moment, really, yeah. at the club. You know, after having a very successful team, where you had you know the cars, uh, the Monahans and the Laces and Gareth and all those lads coming together, and then they all go together. It puts pressure on the people coming behind. So, um, no, there's no uh, there's no real reason for that. I don't think anybody's to blame for it. It's not that the underage structure isn't good. Um, the underage structure there and well paid dividends. Uh, so it's it's you no, know, it was a similar similar. Um, the players just weren't there at the time, uh, Connor, in the late eighties, early nineties. So you know, there's nothing you can do at that stage except suck it up until things turn and improve again. You know. Yeah. Um, for yourself as a player, you always played around the the half forward line, obviously for county. But at club level, you played much more around midfield. Um, where, where did you prefer playing? Uh, what, what type of player did you see yourself as? What was your strengths, really, as a, as a player? Um, I, yeah, I find myself, myself playing midfield for the club a lot um, and the half hour. Right? I suppose, really, you know, I was, I was fit at the time. 
I could cover a big bit of ground. You know, I was I could hold my own. I was strong enough to hold my own with with, with bigger fellas. You know, so um, yeah, you know, I found, I played with Jim McLaughlin a lot in midfield and Paul Carr. I played alongside him in midfield as well. Pascal Brogan played in midfield along with him. You know, um, it was just it was just as um, I was one of the more experienced players in the team. I was in the county squad and I was in good shape and and I was fit to do it and. Um, I didn't really, I didn't mind where I played really. Uh, I honestly didn't. Um, and I suppose the managers out there listening will say it didn't matter where I put him anyway because he went where he was, where he wanted to go anyway. Yeah. Um, so no, it didn't really matter where I lined out. I, I had my own idea of what I could do with where I could do it and when I could do it best. And that's where I, that's where I concentrated probably, you know. And that ultimately led to you being called up at uh, at the age of eighteen, still a minor, being called up to the county seniors under Brian McEnough. Um, obviously, must have been extremely talented. Were you like the Patrick McBurty or Ryan McHugh or Michael Murphy of your time, immediately breaking into the breaking onto the scene? Uh, well, I, I did my minor that 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 March or, or sorry that spring. Um, and um, yeah, McGinnis called me into the squad at, at the end of uh, for for the new season. Uh, start start probably September. The national league started September October time at that stage. So yeah, I mean, McGinnis like giving youth uh, a chance. He always liked pulling young boys in, and I think he used young boys coming in to to, to squeeze the boys further up who were maybe slacking a wee bit and saying you know when he would always turn around and say these young boys want to play. So he. I know I did look at um I was confident enough that I could play at any level anyway. You know yourself at that age, you know, you don't think too much, you just go out and get stuck in. And uh, you know, more often than not, it works out for you. It's only when you start thinking too much about playing that it gets complicated. So no, I had no hesitation. Um I really loved uh, getting involved with the county team and it was it was fantastic to, to play a lot. What what do you remember about you know, your really, really good players like you know? Yeah, what do you remember about your first game? The debut was it was in Ballyshannon against Antrim, and um, I remember coming on so with about twenty minutes to go, and uh, Seamus Bono was playing alongside me, and it's funny that Seamus got arrested. Um, was one of the people that I admired most when I was growing up, along with Donald Monaghan, probably at club level. I used to see Seamus at mass, and. Um, I used to wonder, God Almighty, what is it like to be playing with Donegal and how great it must be. And and there I was on the pitch beside him. And that felt great. You like um and he was a great he was just a real gentleman and a great influence again because he helped the younger boys around and he was such a nice fella. Um but no, you know, I I, I just that's my basic memory of it. It was it wasn't a great day. I never scored a point late on and I was thrilled coming off. So yeah, that's that's 1981, Connor. That's uh, that's 40 years ago, lad. Long so uh, you know yourself. Yeah, it used to be. The um, did you remember any advice that was given to you from a player, or even from Brian McEnough at the time, on uh, how to play, how to train, to to be at that level, of county? Um, no, I suppose, you know, further down the line in that campaign, McEniff was always, you know, sticking me in for 20 minutes here and sticking me in here and, and, and there, you know. So um, it, it was great to play. Uh, you know, I remember coming on down in Wexford and, and places like that. We were in Division 3 at that stage, you must remember. Yeah. Uh, or maybe Division 2, I'm not sure what's put. Um, yeah. No, it, it was great to play against good players and, and, and playing especially with Martin McHugh because I played a lot, of, you know, Playing a lot against them, but to, to get on the pitch and play alongside him was fantastic because he was such an intelligent player. Um and he could he got me into games, you know, when the maybe the game was the pass me, he would give me a pass or a ball or two that would get me in there. Uh it was very different, Connor, then as well, because you know, it wasn't such a possession game, it was very much um thump it on as hard as you could. I'm sure you've seen it from watching it. It wasn't the greatest to watch, but it was 50-50 battles all over the pitch. And uh, you had to fight your corner, and, and that was it. 
you know, I found myself again confident enough to do it, and you know, I'm strong enough to do it. So, uh, you know, it, it it came to me fairly fairly handy, um, and yeah, that's that, that's about it. Like, you know, they, yeah, obviously there was plenty of coaches along the way um, who were an influence. Um, and plenty of players who I played with who were good on. Yeah, the um, the real breakthrough for you came in 1982, not only winning the championship with four masters, but it was the historic under-21 title he has won under Tom Cunningham, uh, the first All-Ireland to come back to the county. And not only you starring on the team, but you were alongside Michael Kelly, Seamus Meehan, Mickey McBurty. There was four of you, I believe. Uh, what can you tell us about that historic season that really, really started it all for Donegal at that stage? Yeah, I mean, it, it was a really, really good squad of players. We knew from the start uh, it was a very competitive unit um, and we had some really, really big characters in it. Um, you know, you had boys like Mulgrew and McHugh and and uh, McDermott and two even Bally Shannon, McBurty, you know, Mickey Kelly with goals. Um, you know, we, we had a lot of leaders throughout the pitch, if you know what I mean. Malloy was there as well. Um, and I, I just knew from early in the season that it, the team was there, the, the, the stuff was there to, to be successful. I don't know if I had seen an, an All-Ireland final on the cards, but I just knew we were going to be good. We were going to be hard to stop. Um, and and really and truly, really, we just ground out results right the way through. Um, the wee man checked a point to equalise the ball buffet against Down, and it was a crucial moment in the, in, in the whole season. Late on, and we went up to Newry and we beat them comfortably, So and we were a good outfit at the time. So, Every time we played and every game we played, we got a bit more confident and we bet Derry in the final and Leash in the semi-final and Leash, like the, the, like the final, the Leash game in, in, in Longford was just a, a grinding match. Uh, I think it might have been something like 5-4 or 5-3 or something. But um, we had the players, you know, right throughout the team, we had the players and a good bench um, to get the job done. And yes, yeah, so there was... There, there was uh, the one single factor I'd say was that we had experienced and, and good leaders throughout the pitch. You know, I remember Mulgrew distinctly going back and and, and taking charge of games where, where things were going against us, and he'd go back into defence and he would tell the boys to you know get going and use you know language that I couldn't repeat here. But it, it was just um, it was just a good bunch of players that we got uh, together, and obviously Tom. You know, Tom had the, the discipline within the squad as well that he brought to the table always with, the, with all his teams. But he also surrounded himself with the boys who knew the game and set out. I'm not saying he didn't know the game and set out himself, but Monaghan and, 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 and Lafferty were good operators on the line. Um, you know, they were shrewd operators when it came to managing and coaching. And... Um, that was it, you know. That was that was. There was no big secret to it. We just uh, we we just kind of knew from early on that we had a good plan, and we were going to go out and give it everything we had. And, and luckily for us, it clicked, and uh, it was an amazing amazing feeling to win in the final. Um, I still remember it so well. Carrick and Shannon on the way home. Um, no, it was it was a genuinely you know memorable occasion and and um, great to be part of. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the big thing was um, the following year, it resulted in an Ulster title for the senior team in 1983. And a large chunk of that under-21 team were a part of that. You, you know, you named yourself Martin McHugh, uh, Donald Reid, Anthony Malloy, players like that. And you just got all the way to the all Ireland semi-final only to lose out to Galway by a point. You know, we could talk about what could have been. But that followed a seven-year drought where you didn't win any Ulsters. I don't think you got to an Ulster final until six years later. I mean, what what happened there? Um, I suppose you know you can talk all night about it, but we lost we lost the following year by a pint up in Uri. We lost the following year to a good down team up in up in. It was just one of those things. It was straight knockout, Connor. There was no yeah. second chance. 
we trained like you know we trained hard for those for those championships, uh, especially eighty four, eighty five, and eighty six, um, when we were really we, you know we were there thereabouts, but we just couldn't get past the first round. Away trips to 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 our man, away trips to New to to Newcastle against Down, and um, we 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 just couldn't um, we just couldn't make the breakthrough. As I say, there was no there was no back door, so we trained hard for a couple of months, and then all of a sudden you're out on on, on one on one day. You know, we had a man sent off, and up in Tommy McDermott was sent off in '84. We lost out there. We gave a bad performance up in Monaghan in '85, but. 87, 88 was a bit different because Tom had taken over and in fairness he had set his own stamp on, on what he wanted the team to be like and how he wanted to operate. Um, some boys didn't buy into it, some did, some didn't. Um, that's neither here nor there at this stage. And um, it took us to 80, you know, it took us to 89 to get to back to a final. And again, um, we had a good team in 89. I suppose if anything, though, I might say that in 89, we were a bit light on the bench. Maybe we just, uh, I suppose when you think of it, there was players outside the fence like Declan Bonner, Mass Boyle, boys like that, who decided not to play. And that was their choice, of course. But um, they would have made the difference between uh, maybe us getting past Tyrone that day and not. Uh, Maybe not. Maybe we would have lost anyway. It doesn't matter. Um, but the team then, um, in a replay, we lost to Drone in a replay, and, and, and 89 was gone. And then, and then Tom's Tom's tenure was over, and McGinnis was back in charge in 1990. I suppose, um, you know, McGinnis again would have would have started with a clean slate more than anything else, and invited everybody back. And um, you know, he got a, he he got the best that Tom Cullen had done. Uh, he'll admit that himself. Uh, where where Tom had really got boys tuned in to doing the thing and doing it his way, and you know, McEnough sort of benefited from that, and you know, was was reasonably successful then for 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 a couple of years, obviously. We lost out to me in a semi-final in 1990, and that, I suppose, if anything, was the biggest learning experience we had had uh, as a team. We, we we just weren't prepared for the level of um, intensity that that Meath team had. Now, they, they, they were a big, strong, physical team, and I don't know if you've seen the game or not. I'm sure you've seen clips of it, but we... We won enough ball to, to, to win the game that day. But we kicked enough ball away. Yeah. We kicked it away anyway, and we didn't get possession. And I was part of the half hour line with Martin and James, and we took a lot of stick afterwards about how we had played and how it had gone. And we were kind of, we, we hadn't played well, although we, it wasn't for one to try and against a formidable. Um, Outfit and Meath, um, but I think that day uh, we learned a lot from that day. We, we we took from that day that if we're going to kick kicking the ball away, we're not going to get the benefit of all the possession we're running around midfield. Malloy was wanting to scatter a ball, so uh, in a, in a way, from that day on, we we decided we weren't going to kick the ball away and. A lot of the time, Martin, or when Malloy was running ball from there forward, he was slipping it off to Reid or slipping it off to somebody running past or shipping it to McHugh where James was looping around behind him. So we, we kind of changed tack, if you know what I mean. Um, and it kind of benefited. And it culminated in us being then sort of a very short hand-passing team. And um, that, I suppose, is how that, that sort of style of play originated. Um, and it originated from that semi-final defeat to me in 1990. Yeah, yeah. The um, like you talk about the the you know physicality. Everyone talks about the physicality of Ulster football, but w w when when people talk about the physicality of Ulster football, when you came up against me that day in 1990, it seemed that they dominated you more physically. 
So what did you have to learn from that? Of course, you said you had to change your system to a short hand passing game. But when you went back the following year, you then got a, um, I suppose, you got a real thumping by down in the Ulster final. They went on to win the All Ireland. Did you did you start thinking to yourself, look, we're a good team, but maybe we're just missing something that's lacking that won't win us an All Ireland because you've been trying for so many years and you just couldn't get that All Ireland success. Yeah. I look at you know we, we we um we were getting we were getting on in years as a team you know we were, we were a very experienced plant at this stage um we had you know we, we had been nine years in championship matches together a lot of us had and you know a lot of us have been there as in the 91 listen uh, and I don't think and I'm not going to try to take it away from them. Down were fantastic on the day, and we were a bit flat. They caught us cold, but make no mistake about it, that was an exceptional darn team. And they proved it when they went to the final and won it, and they came back and won it again in 94. So from that point of view, you know, we can look back at it, yeah, it was a cruel defeat. Uh, the manner of the defeat, I suppose, was worse than anything, but... Uh, we, we couldn't really complain too much about it on the day because they were simply better than us and they blew us away. You know, James McCartan and Mickey Lynn and those boys, if you let them loose, believe you me, um, they were a formidable team, you know. So, um, what what differed again, in, in 92? We learned a lesson from that again. In 92, I suppose, you know, we, we, got a, we got a few breaks along the way. Look, don't get me wrong. Um... We, we weren't perfect in 92 by any means. We were really lucky up in Cavan to come away. The wee man kicked a big free from way out. And we won the replay handy. We, for Mano, you know, we weren't, we weren't get past in the semi-final. And Derry were a good Derry were a good side as well in 92. Uh, and that semi-final, that, that Ulster final performance was huge. And I think, I think it was probably our best performance of the year. Um, we had a 10 men early on and um, we really dug in and we, and we got a result, you know, thanks to <clears throat> some great work by Tommy Ryan, who came on as a sub, got a few great points and, um, you know, we, we got lucky throughout Ulster that year a bit, but again, we had the experience to deal with it and we, knew, we had the know-how, we had the players, just a matter of going out there and implementing it. And, um, uh, thankfully it came off for us and how did the uh you know when when you talk about i suppose 2012 jim mcginnis's teams it required going to dunfanaghy running up sand dunes and running on beaches like were you doing any of that in 92 what, what, what was the training to, to get to this final well i think you know the, there was a stage there was a stage um after the fermanagh match uh, when we had a team meeting and, you know Anthony Harkin was the trainer at the time and, and we had a team meeting and we all sat around and had our, had our, had our speak and uh, a few of the senior players you know Mark McHugh Malloy I think kind of agreed that we needed to up the intensity of the training a bit and that is exactly what happened you know we we, we um, no we didn't go climbing in the mountains or, or, or anything like that. we would have done that earlier in the year if we were going to do it but we did work. Um, we did work hard in training from then on. We did a lot of, you know, we did a lot of fifty meter sprints and and, and, and that sort of stuff, uh, just to build up, build up stamina. And I think it probably worked out well for us. Again, the luck being kind of with us, the timing was good because when it came to sort of the semi final and final, we were kind of peaking like, and. We were in really good shape by the time the final came around. And um, you know, again, it, it may just have been the factor that, that went our way on that time, on that year and uh, made us good enough to, to, to win, like, you know. Yeah, a, a lot of people would say the reason you went into the all Ireland final as such underdogs, um, you, uh, you know, a lot of people would admit you got a little bit lucky in the semi-final with that draw to Mayo and you beat them. I don't think it was the most exciting game of football, but you went into the All-Iron Final against Dublin, and the media were pointing you as a matter of it was just togging out and turning up. I suppose that was a big 
um, you know, motivation for you is to go out and prove a point? Yeah, yeah. Look, the whole game was leaping about the bush. Uh, you just couldn't watch it. It, it was um, it, it was a terrible game, and it, it was. I think, you know, you could feel the tension in the county because I remember talking even to, to the locals and and Donald and the boys who who had experienced defeats semi-finals and that, saying you know how disappointing it was to lose semi-finals, and the, there was that apprehension going in there that again, you know, we would fall flat. Um, and there was a bit of pressure on there, and the performance was dreadful. Um, but again, we ground out. We just ground out a result. It, it wasn't, uh, it, it, you know, it just wasn't a good performance. But again, you know, it, the, the, the gods were there with us, um, and we got the job done. And I think, as you know yourself, it's about the result. We played. Well, if you talk about those those years. In, in 84, 85, and 86, we played really well in those days and got beaten by a point or got beaten by two points. And, you know, this was our chance and this was our turn. Maybe destiny was with us and that's it, you know. Yeah, I'd, I'd, uh, before I go on and, and talk about the final, I just want to mention the two managers you had, you had at uh, county level, uh, uh, Tom Cunningham and Brian McEnough. You know, how, how did they differ in style? You know, you, you said there earlier you could have won the 89 Ulster final if there was a few more boys available, you know, whatever the reason that was, we, you know, we did talk about Tom being disciplined and, and uh, probably falling out with a few players, but how did they differ and what were their similarities in management and what was your relationship, I suppose, with the two managers? Uh, yeah, I'm looking at, I, I have to say, I didn't, you know, I, I, uh, we had our fallouts. Yeah, I, I, uh, I got on ground with both of them. Um, I mean, Tom was local, and uh, he, I, I knew Tom, and I knew the story with Tom, um, and he was totally committed to Donegal, and that was it. You know, there was no, and there was going to be no change with Tom. There was no beating about the bush. There was no other way of doing it. Uh, training was at half seven. You come at, uh, you know, five minutes. Late. You know, Tom closed the gate and said, "No, I'll come back the next night." You, you know, so he, he didn't. Um, he didn't deviate from that, and he was consistent. So, uh, very much a case of knowing where you stood with him. Um, you know, again, you know, he, he had he had to help with him. He had he had Eamon Harvey who who, who came aboard for training um, in the eighties, and, and Eamon was was ahead of his time, really, as a GA coach. I know he was in the flags coach, but for us as players, to experience a coach like him coming on the scene. Was fantastic and um, like that, Tom and Eamon and Lafferty and 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 Donal, and um, you know, he, he differed. I suppose like enough was much more, um, much more calculating probably in his in his in his style. He um, he was very much a uh, arm around the shoulder sort of thing. He'd ring you at seven o'clock in the evening or seven o'clock in the morning, doesn't matter which, uh, just to say, well, well why, how, do, why did you play? How did you find your man that you were playing on yesterday? And, you know, he, so he, he was very much a hands on. Um, talk, uh, like enough, I don't think I've ever met anybody. In fact, I've never met anybody who uh, just was totally committed to Donegal football. Um, he never wanted to talk about anything else. He, he had a golf course outside the outside the front door. He never had a golf ball in his life. Um, he never he never wanted to talk about anything except football. Um, I don't know how he ran a business. I really don't. But but he was totally done. He got football, and that was it. Um, he got, but you know, he, he had several stints involved with Donegal, and um, players will tell you the same thing. That's what he was. He, he just wanted Donegal to do well. Um, Look, and everybody has their, their pluses and minuses, Connor. Um, yeah. I'm not going to discuss too much the, the, the minuses here, but um, both managers were similar in one thing. They, they, they wanted Donegal to do well. And, you know, it, it didn't bother me uh, at any stage. You know, I, I, I got on well with both of them. 
Yeah, well, we'll go into, I suppose, um, the topic most people want to hear, and that was the third Sunday of September in 1992, the All-Ireland Final, uh, the historic day, I suppose, for, for GA fans and, and Donegal people. Uh, talk about the build-up of uh, that day. Uh, there was news broke very early on about Martin Shovlin ha- having to withdraw from the match. Uh, obviously a huge setback, but but talk us through, I suppose, your emotions on the day yeah. and uh, what was said in the dressing room, etc. Um, the preparations went really well. We, you know, a lot of it was low key right through the week. Um, you know, we didn't talk too much um, to the media. We we did bits and pieces, but we we just kept low profile and it suited us fine because the national media. We're hunting Dublin down anyway. You know they were they were after the Dublin players. They really wanted them, and, and the final was really about the Dublin players and how well they had played and how good they were and how terrible we had been against Mayo. So yes, that again fell right into our lap because it took a bit of pressure off us. Um, we said right, let's give this a rattle. We have nothing to lose. You know if we play really well, you know. We, we, we were certainly able to match them, you know. So um, that worked out well for us, you know, about it. Um, the build up within the county was fantastic, Connor. It was yeah. um, just well wishers every, yeah. at every corner, you know. And leaving town that day was, was just, was just um, a joy. And I, I think, you know, it gave us that wee bit of, wee bit of um, I don't know what you want to call it, but it, we were confident enough we, we could do well. But it gave us a bit of determination of steel to say, you know, these people deserve this. Um, they've, they've supported Donegal a long time and they've had, you know, they, they really deserve a big day um, on, on Crow Park on All Ireland Final Day. So, you know, we gathered ourselves pretty well and yeah, Joe's Joe then, um, Joe's shoulder had been a problem right through that week. I think it was maybe Tuesday night that he, he had a collision and uh, he wasn't really, he wasn't moving it. And I just knew by him he was standing around a bit and Joe didn't stand around. Um, he, he just wasn't comfortable and you could tell by him he wasn't comfortable. So anyway, the call was made um, to leave it until Sunday morning to give him every chance. Um, and the call was made on Sunday morning when he went and did a did, um, did a warm up. But I, as soon as he came back in the door, you just knew that it wasn't going to happen for me. He just knew it, it wasn't, wasn't, uh, wasn't going to work. Austin was on the scene, and, and I just knew um, so, um, you know, he certainly didn't pull in behind the team, and 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 uh, decision was made. To put John Joe in, in his place, the selectors only had uh, this decision probably made before, and um, you know John Joe was more than capable of of going in and doing a job. We knew that John coming them obviously felt that that he should have been in, and probably with a good case he, he got sent off in the Ulster final and hadn't got a look on since, um, and probably John John felt he should have got in, and, and rightly so. I, I could see his point, but. The selectors had made the decision for for John Joe, and um, you know we knew having played with John Joe beforehand that you know they, 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 <laughs> there was going to be no lack of fight there, and 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 John Joe would give everything he had, and, and he did. Um, so you know that 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 once I was sorted and settled, you know it was very much a case of just going with the flow, getting the timing right, getting the bus in, and and <laughs> not looking too much at the supporters in the windows. On the way in, it, it was just a sea of green and gold, we felt, and the flags and the bunting. It just again, I suppose, it put a bit of pressure on as such, but probably good pressure. Again, we, we just felt that we needed and we wanted, and you know, we were determined to play well on the day and, and, and give a good account of ourselves. Um, but I suppose it wasn't until we came out onto the pitch that, that we felt the real body of Donegal support and I remember there are my miners added a bit to the colour of it as well um, but the support was phenomenal and um, you know I can't say I remember much about the 
effort once we had the warm up done and got into the game. Um, the game just flew by, you know, it just flew by, except for the last ten or ten or twelve minutes when it dragged by. So um, it was, it was, it's one of those occasions, you know. Um, you think you hope will never end, but it does. Uh, but it's a great memory to have. What we um, you talk like if you look through, I suppose. Um, the history of the GAA, there's always great speeches, great uh, motivations by managers or captains before you go out into the field or before the ball's thrown in. Was there anything said by anyone that stood on, you know, that put hairs on the back of your neck before, or was it just very simple? I mean, this was Donegal's first, and for a long time, they were in the All Ireland final. Yeah, look, I, I honestly can't, I, 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 you know, I honestly can't say that there was anybody who, who got up. And and then and, and hammered the door or anything like that. It was very well calculated, you know. Um, I, I do think that McIniff was aware of the fact that you know people can get overexcited going out, yeah, um, and get carried away and do something silly early on. So he he was very measured in his approach. Um, I do I do remember McHugh and, and Malloy talking as well, and again. It wasn't so much as hell raising. It, it was more a case of, you know, being calculating about what we were doing, how we were going to operate, you know, early on and, and, and stay tight early on, not let them, you know, not let them loose early on because we, we kind of knew the Dublin team were, like any team, if you let them off the hook early on, they railroad you. And um, we were very conscious of not letting them away. And we, we knew we had to start early. Um, and go at them early, you know. I mean, but so from from that point of view, no, Connor. Um, there was some choice words, language, and used, of course, in the dressing room. But look, uh, that happens in every dressing room. But no, I think we were very measured in our approach, um, and it was more a case of, you know, everybody trying to concentrate on giving a good performance, uh, and the team giving a good performance, and 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 take what came. After that, you know. Yeah, and of course, yeah, I mean, after course, winning yeah. All Ireland, it's euphoric in a dressing room, celebrations, uh, maybe popping some form of alcoholic beverage open. Uh, for you, Joyce, it was uh, a very different situation. So it was uh, that maybe not a lot, uh, not yeah. not an awful lot of people know about. Yeah. Um, rumors speculated that day. Well, I'll let you actually. Tell, tell the story about the rumours that did speculate that day in Crow Park that you heard after the match. Yeah, I do. I do look at it. I, I only became aware of the rumours that are circulating afterwards. Uh, I do know Jimmy arrived uh, home from New York and on his way into the stand, somebody Your said brother. that Jared had died, that he had heard a rumour that Jared had died. And um, he, he said, and, and, you know, rightly so, he said, well, God rest him if he is, um, but the All Ireland final has to be played, and Jared would want the All Ireland final to be played. So, you know, thankfully, you know, the, the one nightmare that I sometimes have, Connor, was that somebody had come in and said this to Mike enough before the match, and he came over and had a quiet word in my ear and said, Look, you're not playing this final because uh, your brother has passed away. And, you know, that would have been a tragedy. So, from that point of view, um, I had spoken to Jared the day before I left, and um, you know all I could say was uh, he was devastated that he wasn't going. And um, I, I suppose there was another factor on the way up the road that I had to think about. Um, you know he couldn't go, and I was going, and and, and you know I was going to have to I, I was going to try and make it his day as well. You know because he, he was a, he was a great supporter, and um, you know he would have been keen for us to win, but. No, in fairness, you know, the boys in the dressing room handled it reasonably well afterwards. But I had gone to do it, Matt and myself had gone up to Charlie Collins to do an interview at Highland Radio. And it was only when we came back to the door to come in um, that the door was kind of half shut. And one of the boys said, no, I'll squeeze in. There's a team meeting in there, you know. And, we, and the most amazing sight greeted us, people sitting um Around the, around tables and around chairs and ha you know they're closed off some of them and um, Seamus Boner got rest his soul was another corner and he was crying because Jared and he were good friends and so the rumor had got to them and 
um, the Jared had died and um, Christ, the, the, the arrangement was made to get me out of the out of the pitch, across the pitch, get a taxi, get me back to Donegal. Um, and Maureen was outside, my sister Maureen was outside. And oh, after 20 minutes, you know, she asked one of the stewards what was going on in there. And um, she said, to the, the steward said, one of the players, his brother has died. And uh, she said, um, she put two and two together and she, she said uh, she, she obviously thought of me right away so she she was the one who came to the door and and i was like kept knocking until she got in and she just came in and crossed the floor and said he's not dead <laughs> you know and uh this is the um this is the range of emotions that i was having to deal with at this stage after winning an iron and then he yeah there. Where, and then she where tells me Joyce, he's not. So, Joyce, no, I, 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 where did these speculations stem from? Did you ever think? Nobody knows, Connor. And I, I don't know. I don't really care, Connor. You know, somebody, some of the newspapers were trying to ring me the next day to see was it the Dublin supporters that had created this? Unlikely. You know, it, it's just likely that somebody had said it in passing, and it's not hard to spread a rumor, Connor. You know yourself. Yeah. Um. So. God only knows where it came from, and I don't really care. As I say, it would have been a tragedy if it had gone into the dressing room before the match, because if I'd have heard it before the match, I probably wouldn't have been able to play anyway. Yeah. So that's the thing that I'm most grateful for, that it didn't. So, Father, you know, it, it was when I look back at it, Bishop Higgerty and Austin and Michael Lafferty and I were in the shower, when, or close to the shower door when Maureen came in, and if I had a photograph of it today, it would be worth something. You know, Bishop Higgerty, the doc, myself, and Lafferty. And, you know, it, it's just one of those one of those occasions that, you know, um, it was very disappointing. And it, it, it actually cast a bit of a shadow on the dressing room. It's probably the dressing room should have been a happier place than it was. But boys were um, going to give me a scapular, which I still have at that moment. And... Uh, that's the way it goes, Connor. You know, the rumor got out, um, but thankfully, Jared was, dead, was alive and, and uh, was there to witness this bringing the cup home. And um, yeah. well, I'm very grateful for that. Your final year came in 1994 at the age of 31. Um, at that point, Donegal got to the Ulster final in 93. They lost to Derry. They got to the, the Ulster semi final in 94, lost to Down. Both them teams went on to win the All Ireland. Um, not only you, but a number of players at that stage, you know, Martin McHugh, Anthony Malloy, Donald Reid decided to call the day and Brian McEnough, the manager, decided to call it a day at that point. Uh, what was the reason for stepping down there and then? Um, well, look, at, again, as I said earlier, we had been around a long time, Connor. Um you know, I'd been playing since 82. That was, that was 94. It was, it, it was a great long time campaign year after year. PJ McGowan uh, took over. I think PJ just wanted a clean slate. Um, and I know originally Martin I was upset wanted for to a while, go for the job. But to be fair, he did. Martin wanted the job. Um, and and for one reason or another, he didn't. Um, for reasons that he was never too happy about. But um, you know the politics of the GA in Donegal. Um, it it didn't happen, and um, you know PJ got the job, and and that was it. Um, I I never really I got on the best with, with PJ, uh, and he did come to me the following year to see if I was interested in joining the squad, but I, I wasn't, um, and thankfully I didn't. Uh, again, I think. You know, after 92, 93, we, we lost to, to Derry. They obviously were a good team, but it was an atrocious day to, to lose. And I suppose that's why we were back in 94. We thought we had still a bit left in us. But as a team, we were sort of spent at 90, but 92. That sort of 82 All-Ireland, one and under 21 team had, had just gone full circle. And, and um, you know, it needed a change. We needed The team needed new blood and it needed new faces. So... 
no, there was no regrets. Uh, we, we had good long careers, and you know we we had crowned it with with North Ireland and uh, and a few Ulster championships. So no, we were happy enough. I was anyway. No um, regrets. Yeah, I was disappointed at the start, but no, I was happy enough. There was no going back. It was starting to take its toll. The the physical demands and and, and that were starting to take their toll. And um, you know, it's just you know the end comes, and uh, yeah, it's disappointing, but. Uh, I'd love to be grateful for as well. Yeah, and uh, finally, I suppose, just before you run out the door, um, what I want to talk about is you didn't entirely step away from the GA, played for the club for a number of years, and then decided to uh, stick your foot in and coaching along with Joe Lacey and uh, took over, I suppose, quite a quite an astonishing team at one point, had uh, seven county players, uh, got yeah. to the county semi-final on two occasions in 2010, 2012, uh, what did you learn from that? And I suppose they were they were great times as well for the club. The club was strength to strength. I suppose it didn't show it in trophies, but they were a great team. Yeah. Oh Jesus. Yeah. The, the, you know, it's it's it was it was disappointing that that team didn't win. Uh, they they deserved a, a county championship, no doubt about it. A lot of, you know, it was a really good team, competitive team. Um, what, you know, nothing you can say about the 2012 season that, that, yeah. that brings any that brings any any Seven joy. Seven games in 28 days. It it, it was, uh, um, you know, I I I was really really you know, I was so annoyed that I, I couldn't really bring it. I remember to the manager or the county chairman at the time about it, and um, it was disgraceful what happened. Um, I said it often enough. There's no point in going back over it again. It was it was. It was abysmal treatment of players who had given so much that year, you know, Carl Lacey in particular and, and Wee Barry and, and, the, and those, the Coast County players. But um, no, look, at, you know, we gave a decent account of ourselves, but you know, Joe, and I, Joe would have been disappointed, didn't come away with the championship. Um, and I suppose the players were there to do it, but we didn't get the job done, Connor. You know, sometimes that, this happens and um, only one team wins it. And it, you know, I think that the Kelly Beggs defeat was the most disappointing. In 2010. In final, you know, because we were certainly a better team than Kelly Beggs. Uh, but didn't do the business on the night. The ball didn't fall for us. We, we hit the bar a couple of times and, you know, it didn't happen. But, no, look, it was a great experience. Um, great experience. I've been around those young lads who were, who were a joy to, to, to work with. And, and, you know, I'm still good friends with them since. I suppose. Did you get suppose, great enjoyment? You know, um, yeah, great enjoyment uh, coaching Frank, your nephew. Yeah, that was One fun, all right. Another. Yeah, yeah, he had a good, he, he had a good, I uh, think, he had a good rattle out of that year as well. Um, but yeah, look at in, in fairness, Connor, when when all said and done, and then looking back on the career, I suppose, you know. Yes, yeah, lovely that medals and all Ireland's and, 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 and all stars and what have you, but um, the best thing of it all is, you know, I made so many friends throughout the place, throughout the country that I still know and, and, and have, and um, and within the county as well, and that's worth more than, than all the medals put together. Um, the association is fantastic in that regard, you know, um, they don't actually have enough get-togethers of players um, because it, it's such, such good fun. Um, so, you know, I have no regrets and, and um, I'm still coaching, but I'm actually supposed to be coaching now. Damien Dunyan's a bit like Tom Cullen. Um, he could close the gate. I mean, now we're coaching a, under 16s out in Chicago, so I'm heading out there very I shortly. Uh, way, Joyce. So, um, no, listen, uh, you know, it's been very valuable, Connor, and as I say, um, I've had great times and great friendships along the way, and it's nice that now Kate and Michael are enjoying their football, and uh, um, that's the way it should be. It's 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 uh, it's it's supposed to be enjoyment. Um, remember, Connor. So that's what you know. It's supposed to be fun, and it's supposed to be enjoyed. So that's what we're trying to do from here on in. Joyce, it's been an absolute pleasure, and I know when it comes to four masters or or even the Donegal team, you're you're never too far away. So I want to thank you very much for coming on and. Uh, Really enjoyed it and we'll chat again soon, man.